Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. On this channel, we've tested a nice little list of impact drivers, now ranging from a $40 brushed Bauer model and some Bosch Freaks, to the latest and greatest tech in the tool trade in the form of the Flex Quick Eject, Milwaukee's trusty Gen 3, and the DeWalt DCF850B, their new Atomic. Despite power not being probably the number one most important thing to someone using an impact driver often, it is at least quantifiable, and if we've learned anything from you guys, you want to see what's going to be on top and who delivers those beans. And if the comment section is to be believed, we haven't tested the top tightening twister till today. Enter the Cobalt XTR impact driver. This KKXID 1424A 03 is a brother of the also made by Shervon 2021 Flex impact driver, in case you couldn't guess by their trademark lengthy letter jumble of a model number. This, like the Flex, is a 24 volt max, and also like that Flex, is only sold in a kit. Except instead of forking over $249, you'll be shelling out a mere $179 at your local Lowe's. That's not too shabby for a charger and quite decent 4 amp hour ultimate output XTR style battery rocking 21700 cells inside. Though we do wish they would start selling these dang tools bare already. As a reminder, new tools on this channel are 100% paid for by us, vis-a-vis -vis you. Check out our various tool related t-shirt designs if you want to, we think they're pretty cool. The reason this impact driver in particular is noteworthy is because you guys, and well, most of YouTube, feel it's one of, if not the most powerful impact drivers you can buy for any money. And considering it's not all that much money and hasn't even come out in the last year or two, that's saying something. The Cobalt advertises 2,400 inch pounds of torque or 200 foot pounds on the dot. Until recently, that was the boldest claim of any impact driver out there, only now being bested by the Flex at 2,500 inch pounds from a smaller package altogether. And if smaller packages are what you're used to working with, the Cobalt might not be the number one choice for you. At 5.5 inches long, that makes this noticeably longer than the 4.59 inch long M18 Gen 3 here, or the 4.69 inch long newest model to come from Shervon the Flex. Longer, but not unwieldy, this XTR. Same length, in fact, to the Craftsman V20. Just maybe a half pound more heft to it. Certainly with this XTR's battery length, the tool head being shorter wouldn't afford you a whole lot of extra mobility. Hopefully some of that flex stacked lithium tech trickles its way down into this blue brand to make use of that advantage like DeWalt is now doing with their power stack. This XTR has modes of course for more gentle usage like most top of the line drivers, but that's not what we're here to see today. We want to see those beans, at least all 200 of them for sure. So let's see that. Our first test is called Working Torque, five seconds and forward. Here's the M18 2853-20. 167 foot-pounds, which coincidentally is exactly the 2,000 inch-pounds this model is advertising at. Now for the Flex Quick Eject, their top impact driver model. One hundred and ninety three foot pounds. One thing you'll notice with this flex is it makes all that power in a hurry, snugging things up real quick with its four thousand four hundred and fifty impacts per minute. Okay, last up is the Cobalt XTR in this first test. One hundred and sixty two foot pounds. Last place, only a smidge under that M18, but nonetheless, last so far. Let's hop into reverse. Here's the flex taking on that M18 Gen 3 with 10 seconds of that reverse impacting action. 211 over 181, that flex making more power than some of the name brand compact impact wrenches we've tested here. She's pretty brutal. Now for the XTR, maybe it prefers reverse. 
204, just below the 211 of the flex. And what's more interesting is that linear torque curve. It may be slower to get there on some tasks, but once things are super tight, she's still climbing. Interested to see if our forward test can seal the deal though. We should mention after this max test, we do three runs of each as usual. The flex needed a lunch break, was just getting too hot and would shut off or make less power on subsequent runs. It needed a good 20, 20 plus minutes to make the beans again. This cobalt, however, all that power is being spread over more space and more mass. Wouldn't say it even got as warm as the Milwaukee. It's ready for some more action. Here's max forward torque, 10 seconds in that clockwise direction. Flex in Milwaukee on screen up next. Two hundred and five over one eighty eight this time. That flex, when not boiling over, does just make gobs of power everywhere. But can the XTR stand out from the pack? Does it earn its internet comment section credentials? Let's find out. Two hundred and twenty-three. A new record. It did it, boys. This tool likes forward and that linear torque curve paying dividends in the end, just not slowing down anytime soon. If we could reliably do 15 second or longer tests here without breaking adapters constantly every run, this XTR might pull away even more, maybe a little bit more than the pack, but she's breaking adapters even in 10 second tests like here as it is. So there's two takeaways you can learn from this curve. The impacts per minute of the XTR being 4,000 and the M18 being 4,300 and Flex being 4,400 allow those tools at this lower torque scale in the middle and low end to take an early lead. This means if you're starting from zero torque, like a screw or maybe a small lag bolt, these two tools, the Milwaukee and Flex, would probably drive it home quicker. But if your task is a large lag bolt requiring a lot of torque or a bolt already tightened that you're trying to loosen, you can sort of judge things by starting up here in this range. If the task is requiring a lot of torque, this XTR is going to be making more progress or doing things that the others might not be able to do. That's of course thanks in part to its size though. Let's see if our rank chart, where things like that are penalized, thinks this XTR is as good as the dyno says. Let's start right here for now below its two competitors from today. We are after top honors after all. The XTR's very respectable power runs are turned into points by dividing by five on our driver's list. So that's 32, 41, and 45. The XTR is 5.5 inches long, longer than these two and much longer than that great new Atomic by DeWalt, but it also made heaps of power. That's 40.6 foot pounds per inch. Very good, but still being bested by this bunch here. It claims a massive 200 foot pounds for a quarter inch drive tool and made even a little bit more than the 208 rated flex here. So full marks at 100 points here, like most impact drivers get on this channel. Sort of love this category for that. $105 is what we're assigning this tool as bare using the same method we applied to the flex because these tools are only sold in kits. That makes for 17 points, quite good overall. And this totals 275 Point six, rocketing this XTR right up into first place with its flex brother, which given their similar performance, voltage, their points shown here in the not super solid pricing math we used on these, we think these two tools could be somewhat interchangeable, yet the XTR being very clearly larger in size and the flex not loving long back-to-back -back usage in our opinion. Considering this XTR sells at retail before sales and such, for about as much as a 100 foot pound rated M12 impact driver kit goes for. And heck, not even considering its price, this XTR is a bruiser. Ours out of the box was particularly smelly. Yes, like an odor coming from it, like hot plastic and rubber left out in the sun, but maybe times 10. Though after usage, it didn't really get hot and smelly like the Flex. It likes to be ridden hard and put away mildly warm, something tools of 2021 and beyond with their miniature stature are going to have a harder and harder time trying to accomplish with little to nowhere else for all that heat to go but their tiny heads. Either way, as it turns out, the internet was right again. It seems like to us, even without a channel like ours, at least with impact drivers in this case, you guys with the help of great channels like Philly Fixed have been able to pinpoint powerful prospects pending our perspicacity. 
Potentially. Anyways, happy to throw more on the dyno if you like though. Offer some suggestions down in the comment section below and we'll pick one from that to enter in the arena next. Thanks for watching.